Hey. How are you doing? Let me stop all my repeated stop and get this out of the way. And I think I need to raise this up just a little bit. Hello, welcome to a new live stream. My name is John Skippy Limkul. Nice to see all of you. Welcome. We are going to have some fun programming insanity time here. So that's that's what we're all about. Greetings to all, Gareth. Oh my gosh, Paul's here talking about getting Contact 5 and Omnisphere soon. I would be stoked too. That's awesome, dude. You're going to love it. It is a good place to... Those two in particular are mighty tasty plugins to play with. Not to mention the doors of sounds that will be opened up and available to you. So congratulations. Uh, let's see, who else is here? Cox is here. Sunny, Bernie. Zimmer keyboard range. And actually, since these are violins, they sound... So that's one of the multis I've created for Mega Magic Violin, which will be out uh, fairly soon. Hopefully you guys are all working on your patches so that we can get them all together by this coming Wednesday night is when we need them at the latest. And then we will compile the library. We will get it to a handful of other judges to check out and to give us their feedback on what they think. And then we will, oh, there we go with the echoes. We will then be able to uh, figure out what, what patches we want to use and select and then let you guys know, put it all together with all of this that we're building for the multi-mode and hopefully get it out within a week or so, so that it's out end of September, early October. And it's coming out really great. I've had some fun time programming, so I'll show you some of the patches I've been working on. Um, and we're gonna do a safari. So we're gonna take off and um, make some patches. Another thing I wanna do, I... Uh, came across a company this week and it's it's I'm in a really cool position where I can contact a company and say hey I, I I'm really enjoying your plugins I think they're great um let me give you some exposure in, in exchange for you getting me the plugins so they will send me an NFR so I have them to work with and to show you and then I can share with you guys instead of me just buying them and then it's like oh it's just, you know it's, 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 it's only fair they would give you something when you're going to turn around and have a lot of people look at it and potentially go buy them because these guys make... Actually, it's one guy. Um, when, I, when I found them, I, I, I contacted him. I said, okay, so give me a little story about yourself. Who, who is this company? How many people? How long? And all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's one guy. It's, it's just another one of those one person doing some pretty th cool things. So the company I'm going to point you to is a company called In-Ear Design. It's, oh, In-Ear Display. Did I say design? I should make sure that I, uh, let me see here. I think I said, yeah, display, In-Ear Display. Let me fix it, D-I-S-P-L-A-Y. 
Um, and I need to fix that over here on this page too. Shame on me. Um, let me see, where's the editor so that we can event details. It's in your display.com. And what he has, he's, he's quite talented. Uh, keep editing. Oh, we got to save this. How do I save? Spread the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go away, go away, go away. Uh, your changes have not been saved. Well, how do I? Where's my save button? Oh, there it is. Update settings. Okay, there. Everybody's updated. Um, so we're back here to that. Um, so in your display is a company that has um, a handful of plugins. We're going to take a look at all of them. Because they're all great. <laughs> um, here's his page. Well, first of all, to be fair, uh, this is my humble page. If you need inspiring patches, please come to PluginGuru.com. Uh, here's the link to get the violin library that we're going to be making patches from. It's $2 for the... Uh, there's 18 samples, 18 patches. They're kind of in a very neutral state. And then it's up to you to program and turn them into patches and get them back to me. And if they are selected, they will be put into the full library if they are of good quality and blow us away. And you will get the full $50 library of violin for free when it comes out. And it, all patches are good. Every I, I don't want to say that some are good or bad and all that kind of stuff. There's just, it's again, it's some people have a language skill here and some people have a language skill here in talking as well as in programming. So... Um, we will put everybody's patches together so that everybody gets everybody's patches. So it's a $2 library that will end up being like 200 patches probably by the time it is done. Um, and then there's a whole lot of other plug-in libraries for all sorts of different things. So support the teacher. I provide knowledge and all I ask is that you support. Help me keep doing this full time by buying libraries. So I thank you for your support. Here is In Ear Display in your display.com he has a summer sale going on so not only are there um, five plugins that are really interesting uh, the very bottom one let's see here I believe regressive is free I think right is this free you can download for free here yeah this is actually a really cool distortion type of a plugin um, but there's a mal game that's incredible if we go to the plugins page you can see here mal game is a sound design playground, and it truly is a sound design playground. Um, Ephemer is a glitch percussion synthesizer. It's a chromatic one octave FM synthesis for each note. It's really cool. Uh, Lytote is a kind of really out there um, granular kind of a tool. Insipit is a creative delay. Cruel is brutal distortion. And Regressive is the free... You can download it right now. Really cool. Uh, it's got filtering, lo-fi. It's got some LFOs that can be assigned to things. It's got modular routing and so forth, as you can see for some of it. And its personality is really unique, and it's free. So on top of the other ones that are... Uh, even the drum plug-in, check this out, is like 49 euros, which is like $80 US maybe, and it's 40% off if you use the... The promo from the home so just use in ear display summer 2018 and you save 40%. So these, when you when you hear these, you will be like, oh my God, <laughs> these are cool. <laughs> uh, so we will look at those too. So that's kind of the game plan for today's live stream. Also, if you have questions, if you do a little at and then plug in Guru so I can see your message, I will get to questions and answer any questions you have on programming, on any of the stuff that's going on, okay? So, um, Mega Magic V, Mega Magic Violin is MMV. It's actually MMVLN, because there's also v -I -O -V -L -A for viola, right? So, you want to make sure that uh, you're not confused there. Um, Uh, let's see here. So, okay, we got that fixed up. Uh, 
So what should we start with? Do you guys want to hear effects first? Let's do the effects, and then we'll get into programming. Um, so let's go to here, which is currently break tweaker, but let's change this instead to be ephemere. This is... Let me sequence something really quick. Actually, I want a little bit something, something similar. So. Okay, so we got a cool groove. Let's quantize. Here's some of the kits. Cool sounds. I've heard these on records. There's a couple guys that I know that use this a lot. So there's all these kits. Right? So, oh, that's a cool sound. I like this pure FM. It's got a really nice pure sound to it when you play. When you play a note, you. There's feedback, amount of FM. There's filtering. You can get some sweet spots. There's amp. There's a looping release, so you can do an envelope. Release. Right? So. Let's get a groove going and then I'll show you some of these other effects. So on top of this, let's add Amalgame. This is his uh, really cool sound design toolbox that you think he called it. Check this out. So. So what you're looking at here is these are all the possible effects. Saturate, metalizer, bot delay, band pass filter, high pass filter, low pass filter, drilla. If you take one of these and you just click and drag to a box, it puts it into here. There's an X sequencer with, a, with step sequences, with rates for playback. So you can choose how it repeat. Crazy stuff. As you can see, it's got cool time off rhythms like one tenth. And so there's a lot of presets. Not enough presets, but. Totally unique sounds. Again, we're starting with this. I mean, it's not afraid to go there, if you know what I mean, right? So it's very fun to play with. You have XY sequences that you can use to modulate things. And you gotta turn it on by just hitting the little bot, little light right here to turn on, or the V sequence. You go to pitch. So you can get a lot of crazy stuff happening. 
Isn't that great? I l just love the quality of the effects that this one thing can do, the places it can go. Uh, it's like pretty insane. So there's that. Um, regressive, I believe, is the free. This is the free distortion you can get from his site. Cool stuff. Um, light tote. I think this is the uh, this is the granular. And I haven't studied up on this. So one thing to know about uh, in your display, he's worked with Ivano Ivo Ivanovich for glitch machines. They've collaborated on some of the plugins that uh, Ivano sells. Evo sells. Um, so there's there's he knows glitch, and so this can do some cool. This is again taken. So you can go to each one of these, I think, and get some settings. Um, so this is your out there. The breakdown in the middle of the song, you can go here, right? Don't do this the whole song. <laughs> um, Insipit. This is delay sound design. So it's up to three channels with delays that do pitch shifting and all sorts of crazy stuff. He's got manglers. Dubs, tones, here's some tones. So it can go some rather insane places with this configuration. So. So it's got some really cool possibilities to what it can do. Okay? And then finally was Cruel, which is this distortion, which is the paid version of the um, regressive. This can do more capable things. Oh, we got to the end of our song. Wow. 127 measures of groove. <laughs> Yeah. So all sorts of places. So Ow, so cool. So yeah, so you should know about um, if you need creative sound design plugins, uh, in your display is definitely uh, someplace I didn't know about and I found about this week and I wanted to share with you guys. So some really fun, capable instrument for the drums. If you need FM drums, pure drums that have got a... These types of sounds sound really great when you put them into big reverbs for big hits and when you put them into cool rooms and... If we were to go over here to Valhalla room or something like that, this would be really nice on it. So,
So, good stuff. So, I want to just make sure you guys know about these guys because in your display is worth your attention, my friends. Okay, so that is our. Let me see if there's any questions. I'm not even following chat, I'm just playing around here. I think my ears are bleeding. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. Uh, is it okay to put personal samples in making patches for Mega Magic Violin? No, it's not okay for this. It's only using the violin samples or stock uh, Omnisphere samples. Um, save the samples that you're working on for the projects you guys are working on with the ESC. I think just to make it easy, we should do it that way. Uh, oh, Mike, yeah. Changing YouTube channel names. I'll tell you a funny story. So like two months before I grabbed the name, uh, I wanted plug in Guru for my channel. Someone else grabbed it two months before me. And over the course of the last nine or 11 years or whatever, how long have it's been, He's released seven videos. He hasn't released anything in like eight years. And I'm trying to get a hold of Google to find out if I can take that channel name instead of the plugin guru, because that's what I have to use right now for my YouTube channel name. And uh, it's really hard to um, really, really hard to get Google to <laughs> change things like that. Part of it is it's your channel address and it's all over the Internet in messages on forums everywhere. So I'm not so sure I want to change it. But it'd be nice if there's a way to like tie the two together and have us that because he's not using his channel, you know, your, your name is stuck. So it is a pain. Um, so anyway, so what we have now, we've, we've now converted to multi maps all of the library of violin samples. Um, yes, Glitch Machines is also incredibly dope. If you don't know about Glitch Machines, Ivo Ivanov uh, is, a, is a really, really talented. It's your, This is for the more chaotic sound design, abstract stuff. He has both really affordable plugins and really affordable sample libraries of all sorts of really cool samples that you can use. Uh, here, I'll show you that really quick because we should give Evo a little plug while we're while we're here talking sound design and cool things. And I have time. You have time. Let's see here. So let's go like this. And if I go to show me the browser, I'll, po I'll pop it over so you can see where we're at in a minute. But I'm trying to get to uh, this is the not the desktop, not here, not there. We want sample mass to the sample libraries and uh, glitch machines of course glitch machines glitch machines libraries uh, yeah let me see are any of these gonna show up or uh, oh here we go contact kits so here's the composite kits so this is a library of his, just to show you one, this is Biomorph. They don't come with fancy interfaces. But he does his own sampling sessions, records all sorts of source with really great microphones. And then if you do film, TVs, This is one kit. And he has the organic kits. And I think it's like one twenty-nine dollar kit. I mean. So if you're into these kind of sounds. Great. It's like, how would you use these? Well, if you had like the opening of a song, 
let's say we had called up something like, uh, let's say, Dream Ensemble. And, and let's put a filter on this. So I'm going to go, who has a filter I really like? I really like FX expand or the fab filters. Is it simple? Yeah. This is actually their free filter. So let's do this. What you do, go to your sequencer, turn on like latch. So while you're sequencing, you can be moving things at the same time. Oh wait, I'm gonna have that drum groove play, right? I don't want that drum groove to play, so let's get rid of that. Um, this is how easy it is to build cool things. So. In the beginning of time. And then right there you go to something else, right? So we have this cool, and I want to put a stereo delay on that because it doesn't quite have enough weight to it. So you go delay, uh, stereo delay, and let's choose like a uh, quarter notes. And let's have it do the other side be different so it's stereo, maybe a half note. All right, so we got this going on. Let's go over here and let's recall back up the Femir. All right, so. So I played around, I recorded that, and this is what happens a lot. And this is a way to write music that I don't know if a lot of you will think of this or not. But I've recorded this idea, and only a part of it I want to use. Only towards the end was it really good. So I would go to like 11, hit Q to quantize this part to 16th notes up here. Right, like right there, 13. So I hit 13, command T to split, and all this earlier stuff that was my checking out to see what I wanted, delete that sucker, and now take that little two major thing and move it back to the beginning, and hit loop, and let's see if we can get rid of this because we don't need that. And then let's get a stereo delay on this. Now I'm ready for, um, These kinds of sounds, right? You need to... We can go to a different kit, maybe some sort of a subby kit for the first parts. So we need, oh, Plasma Gene, of course.
There. That's what I wanted. Something like that. So one, two. Just hit that. Let it ring out. Now, I'll say, so we got loop. Uh, we don't want loop on that. So here's the thing. In contact, I'm going to start building up with multiple MIDI channels. My sequencer isn't set up to do that. So I'm going to go over here and you go to the track page. And instead of being MIDI channel all, change it to one. So this part is one. And then under track other, you can say new track with next MIDI channel. So this way it stays on the same instrument, but it automatically makes another track that has MIDI channel two and you can use key commands. So control and return. Here's three, four, five, six. So I'm now ready for six different kits if I so desire to build up that much in contact. So now all I do is I go to like this kit and instead of dragging over this, I just drag it right here and it automatically sets it to MIDI channel two. And if I'm on channel two, I'm now playing it. And instead of these kits, let's say I want to go to the Zenith Gene kits or something, right? And there's all sorts of stuff. I'm just going to play around for a minute, so... So you get the idea. Then on top of this, if we wanted to really take this into cool lands, you would go to a library I haven't released yet that I will be releasing after Violin. And that would be um, Signs of Life, which is going to be both natural ambiences and um, processed ambiences. But even a natural ambience in this would be really cool, I think. So if we were to go, let's see... My, here we go. Signs of Life, Costa Rica. Let's choose something like uh, Frogs in the Rain, Soft Rain. So we just go down here and drag this. And then let's see. Let's go over here. Let's hit Loop and hit A for Automation. And I'm going to click here to Start Automation. And I'm going to have it start soft and then slowly come up in volume. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> Then maybe some noise, and then when you get to the really big moment when the, the this part ended, I mean, you get the idea. You can build using these sound effects samples in cool ways to make cool tracks. It's really fun to do stuff like this. So, um, yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> Before the signs of time, there was another man that came from the stars. He didn't look like us, but he farted like us. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, had to go there. Uh, but you get the idea. It's fun to do this stuff. So I love sound design. I've, I've worked on hundreds of commercials in a previous life. And it's really fun to match sounds to what you see on the screen, to things moving around. And it's, it's, it's something I love to do very much. So um, hopefully that gives you guys some food for thought in a different direction. Uh, regarding layer auxiliary sins or common auxiliary sins, I think it depends. Uh, let's see. Henrik is asking what? Let's get up here. Uh, Oh, Contact 12 Ultimate. <laughs> yes, um, Contact 12 Ultimate is definitely worth getting. 
winning uh, there's so much in all these sound design libraries and things and contact five and absinthe and fm8 and the synthesizers are all so great um reactor is one of the most unique synthesizers because it's so open-ended um i was talking with some people yesterday and showing them razor and it's still one of my favorite synthesizers on the planet because of how unique it sounds and how crazy flexible I, I, let's go i'm just having fun this is just a hang on saturday right so i don't have a huge agenda if you don't so i'll just show you stuff uh, when adding Henry Henrik asks, when adding effects to patches in Omnisphere, what is the best way to put it? Auxiliary sins on all layers, oh, auxiliary sins on all layers, or auxiliary sins on common. Um, well, so it depends on what you're making. What sound are you making? Um, say you have a bell element and you have a nice dark pad element. Uh, that's when you would want to go to the layers and maybe just send the bell into a reverb so that the pad stays more focused. It's it's really up to what you want to do. Um, the flexibility is there. Uh, you just have to understand what the benefits of each way gives you. I think is the main thing that a, a lot of people miss out on is they don't they don't understand that flexibility and what that means. Um, so we'll look at that. We'll look at that in a minute when we're making a patch. We'll we'll definitely explore that. We'll try to like combine two things that shouldn't be combined. But uh, this is Razor. And this is inside of Reactor. And if you, just to give, so, so many of you guys are new to synthesis. I, I'm realizing that I'm helping educate a lot of you with what is out there. So I'm gonna do more of this. If you hit the edit button, um, this will let you look behind the hood. If you have the full version of Razor, um, and you open this up and you go to the ensemble. Um, here's Razor. And if you open up the synth, there you go. It's all, it's, this is the anano anatomical kidneys and gallbladders and lungs and heart that come from a huge building block list that you can add. You can build libraries. You have all these different blocks that you can add from the library for oscillators and so forth. And Razor is really unique in that it is based on 512 oscillators. So you see these oscillators here. And you can do crazy insane things with this, the effects. This reverb is like no other reverb because it's actually part of the synthesizer itself. It's not a separate effect. So if you open up this decay, and let's say we use this envelope right here. So we say we want envelope two. And we bring up the decay. Oh, this is the wrong reverb, let's go to. Oh, the filters, this is a band pass. Turn that off. Uh, this isn't a good example. Um, there you go. Now you hear the reverb. And what's cool, the reverb is still active. Pitch band, other effects. And it has a sound like no other synth. I've done three libraries for Razor and they are all unique and... So the Native Instruments effects are unique in that they do a lot of experimental out of the box what ifs, you know, types of things. Uh, people have made things, brought them to Native Instruments, Native Instruments license it, and then it becomes effects like this and Razor and. You know, Molecular I showed a couple of weeks ago when running the, the sounds sounds from Costa Rica into Molecular, that's in here. Uh, Prism is cool, Polyplex. There's all of these different, <laughs> just crazy, the TRK-01 just came out. Uh, save changes. This is this really cool bass and kick drum married module that you can do. A 
just hit play. And this just this module by itself. And then you have control over the kick. Right? As well as the oscillator for the bass. So you can do your bass. The idea is to have them close enough to do. So a lot of outside of the box thinking goes into the native instruments effects. That's where you got to really give them credit. Uh, don't email them asking for tech support. Probably won't ever hear from them. <laughs> At least not. It's really rare, it seems. That's not their forte. <laughs> but the creativeness that they have that they create uh, is great. And they do try. I should say they are trying harder. You can call. I've talked to people in Los Angeles and stuff like that from times when I've had problems. So you can get a hold of them. But uh, they're kind of, you read enough forums and you see a lot of comments about people that are a little frustrated because they haven't gotten through to them. But I don't want to put them down too much because they are doing stuff. Yeah, tier, track one is beyond description. It's it's incredible. So get in contact. Ulti, the uh, Ultimate 12, which has that plus, I mean, we could spend just a day playing with contact sample libraries that come with complete. I mean, they're insane, insane in so many levels. And there's tons of reactor sense. There's a whole online community of people that, have made reactor ensembles of their own that they share for free. Um, so yeah, they do. They are pretty bad on user support. Um, anyway, so let's do this. Let me get this reset back to turning off my delays and no automation. Um, <laughs> no filtering like I was doing my little thing there for a minute. Let's go delete all automations so that there's nothing here. So we don't have to worry about that. All right, so violin. Talk about changing gears. So this library, um, I now have the maps. And this is using eight samples across the keyboard. If you needed a solo violin playing like a solo passage, this can work, uh, especially when I get done making my more legato patches. But these are more for small ensemble. Or layering with piano things like that these would be really nice and there's four variations and the four variations uh, means that each one of these has the well the dry is just the violin samples and then the other two very the other three variations have actual effects recorded into the samples there's no effects going on except for just a slight bit of reverb just to give it so it's not totally dry but the vibrato ambience has a room ambience, like a chamber. If you compare that to the dry. There is a nice difference. And then the mega magic are these really beautiful where there's lush reverb. And then Mega Magic 2 is a step up from that because one of the reverbs has this shimmer verb, which does this pitch shifting, which is you just hold it and it grows. So these are really great for making pads, which is why Mega Magic 1 and Mega Magic 2 samples are prominently displayed and found inside that demo library because. They have a lot of really cool stuff in them for making patches. You can go all sorts of places with them. So there's the, 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 the vibrato. There's no vibrato, which if you're doing 
bluegrassy things, or the reverbs are really nice. Just that stark. Uh, crescendos. Uh, let's do the Mega Magic one. This has where it fades from. Z you know? And we have a both uh, Mega Magic without loops, so it fades out. And then you also have it looped where we looped it right in the top. It's right there and then we freeze it. So now it's usable as a pad. Does Omnisphere 2.5 have an input capability? Uh, it does not. Uh, the only way to get audio in is to record it as audio first. And then you could put it into Omnisphere. You could record audio of an entire track of a song, load that into Omnisphere, and trigger it at the beginning of your song like you would playing back a stem and add effects if you wanted from what's inside of Omnisphere. But uh, there is no input to run audio source into it. Um, you know? So down ups, these have more of a bowing motion. This is with Mega Magic 2 reverb on it, so it's got the stereo shimmery. They sound great beneath a really big dance track going on. We've been working with it that way. Uh, the pizzicato of a solo violin is very small. Right? Uh, the ambient. Now you can really hear that room. And then when you get to the, the Mega Magics, you can play these short. And I kind of designed it like an Inya in my mind, kind of. A... But the thing is, if you hold down notes, boom. This is all the reverb that's in the samples. So you can have it ring out as well. Just hold down the sustain pedal, it'll play through. And then here you'll really hear the pitch shifting of Mega Magic 2. Hear that? Isn't that nice? So that's the effects that are added to everything. All the things that say Mega Magic 2, sometimes it's subtle because it's a big violin sound, but that cool pitch shifting reverb. is in there. So I'll do a, we'll do some stuff where we're doing like in a live context, how you would use these. Um, then the spiccato has a nice. Uh, there's the up and the down was kind of the marcato. But I decided to call it spiccato down so that we would know we had an up and a down stroke that were very closely related. And it wasn't a true marcato. Okay. Uh, the motion slow is maybe my favorite because it has this just... She would just play for 30 seconds. And when you do that to all these different notes, it just sounds like they're playing naturally. So it, it kind of helps with the, I don't have a sample on every note.
you know, you can do some nice things like that. Motion fast, there's two versions. There's the uh, sort of fast. And then the really fast. For cool film cues and stuff like that. Motion harmonics is beautiful. There's these. I always think of Iceland and cold places when I hear this, you know? Okay. The open notes are actually only four samples for the... What are the notes? Uh, let's see if I go over here and see right here. G3. Um, D4. A4. And E. So those are the four notes played in just open. Oh, we haven't mapped this right. So this needs to be down like this. And down like And then map this. So I'm changing. There. There. There, there's the four notes. <laughs> so is you unique enough? Here, I'll save that. So save. We just converted these and we're still going through. There's bug checking to do, of course, right? Um, so there's the open notes. Then we have after that the composites that I've created. Uh the pizzicato, which has um cello, viola, and violin. Kind of a thing. Uh, Dream Ensemble is nice and... More the lush, slower pad kind of an approach, and then this is more the... Power. Uh, the dark is moody. And then I think three weeks ago we made this together in the live stream. And during that light, same live stream, we made this sound. Which is in the demo bank and then sonatarium. Okay, so those are the samples and kind of the presentation of the library. Um, if you have questions, pop them up here. You guys are in a DAW talk over here, which is interesting. Now I know what you have done in all those sleepless nights. Yeah, yeah. It takes a long time to make these. Um, you know. The choice of what sequencer you use is really important. Uh, it's your tool. You want to just get one that has the capabilities and the interface and the way it works. I keep trying for the life of me to go to using other for types of DAWs. And um, I've used Logic for so long, I'm kind of stuck in just enjoying how that works. And I know how it works. And if I need to get a demo or a song done really quickly, um. I know what to do. And you kind of need to feel that way with what you choose to use. And so um, whatever you use, I would suggest spending some time on YouTube. Say, you know, tips and tricks and then the name of your sequencer. And you will find all sorts of things that even if you're seasoned, you didn't know about. <laughs> some 20-year-old kid with a really high-pitched voice will tell you all about things you didn't even know existed with your sequencer that they're using in their music productions. Um, so it's a good place to, to go. So the Mega Magic Violin demo, I should clean this up here. One second. So let's go like this because I've moved these sounds. I now have a, uh, just so you know, you can do this. So I'm going to go to the Mega Magic Violin demo folder. 
And I'm gonna open this up and Foggy Mountain, Power Strikers, Skippy Ensemble. Um, and these, these. Open notes. Bye bye. Don't need a bass. Don't need the that. We don't. Oh, Spicato Bell Harp. And those two sounds are in there. So if I select these guys, I should now be at 18 samples. Okay, so I'm back to the 18 patches. Now check this out. I have modified the patch folder by deleting things from it. Because Omnisphere sees this folder and recognizes it, I'm able to say update. And it will take it a second because there's a lot of other libraries. The more libraries you have, the longer it will take to both install sound sources. If you convert them, it has to add it to the list and it goes down the list every time before it adds a new one. So if you're trying to import samples, be aware that's one of the things you'll deal with. Uh, but same, same here, I have a lot of patches, so it's going to take it a long time to go through and, and do its directory check to all the patches. But Pitsy Knocker and Cascade Falling and Foggy Mountains, uh, those will go away because that folder is what I use to delete those samples. And you'll see in just a second. Or two or three. Um, that they go away. So they're gone, so we are back to just the basic stock patches. Okay, so let's have some programming fun. Uh, somebody call out a category. What kind of sound should we make? See if you guys are listening. <laughs> Someone's listening, I know. A lot of you guys are in a discussion, but someone throw out some ideas of what type of sound we should try to make using violin. I wanna see some ideas. And we'll go for something out of the box. Bongo. <laughs> J-pop. Ah, these are interesting. Or organic patches. Well, these are organic samples. So I uh, let's see. Let's see what other ideas we have. Bongo would be fun. I, actually, bongo would be really easy because we could just use pizzicato. A texture. Okay, we'll do it for a texture. But let's do this. So if I wanted to do this, big country Montana. <laughs> if I want to make this into a bongo, I need to get a little bit more slap. So one of my favorite tricks for adding harmonic and stuff to uh, Omnisphere's patches is to use the crusher. Because you can like use that really subtly. Go over here and say modulate this with an envelope. And then you have to go look at the envelope and let's set it to just a simple strike. And let's add another out. So we get a few more like a noise, a little splash. Now that sounds more like a skin of like a drum, right? Here's without. So you can add all sorts of textures to a sample you also have a really cool thing shift doesn't do anything but crush does now bongo's up high so let's take this up an octave oh, not down an octave hello and a bongo's short so we got to come over here Shorter than that even so we'll take let's say lock because I'm going to keep this shape here for the release let's add Now, it depends on how realistic you want to get. If you want to get realistic, you probably wouldn't use any of this. I mean, we're using a pizzicato to make a bongo, so we're not realistic in the first place, right? 
then velocity sensitivity is important. And I would probably go to a uh, maybe a bandpass filter. Let's see here. Resonance, bandpass. Oh, 36 dB is too much. Uh. Oh. Let's see, show me over here this. This way I can get a little bit thinner. And then sequence it. Well, let's. let's you would, uh, let's do this to, for a shortcut. Uh, Omni Percussa Mid Bongos. You could also do a thing like um, modulate this with velocity. And then maybe find it. And then go over here and get your velocity. Now I'm looking for like the second harmonic in a bongo. And then you go say minus seven or minus five. Usually is the interval. So <laughs> we're far away from a bongo, but pits and go goes. But I kind of like that. I'm going to save it. Kind of synthy bongos. I'll take it. So go save patch as that can be turned into something. It, it would take a little bit more time to turn it, but let's go to Mega Magic. I'm going to go to the, well, we'll save it to the demo library. What the heck? So let's go back to the library demo and we'll say Electro Perk. And this is drum. Sinto piso bongo. And then I'll I'll tag it up later if it does turn into Potential. I like that. So I did some edits so I can just say save patch quick to update it. So you can just keep building on it as you go. All right. Uh, John, if I can ask an off the wall question, you've made a lot of serum patches. Do you still like serum a lot? Uh, I love serum. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful synthesizer. <clears throat> It has a very unique personality to it. Um, it's very different than Omnisphere um, in its kind of just presence. Um, there's so many cool sounds that are available for it. Um, we've got quite a few libraries. We've done both <clears throat> of the, the typical kind of sounds for Serum as well as a lot of the Mega Magic libraries. Because it has this noise oscillator that can also be a sample, um, that's really fun to play with. No, it's great. It's great. Um, how do you get serum to stick with a skin? Oh, yeah. Good question. Um, I 
I don't use skins, so I, I just use the default. <laughs> um, textures. We were going to look at textures. So textures, I would probably start with one of the cool sounds. Here, let's do a texture using harmonics. Oh, I have some. Let's start with this. And a sine wave, just to give us, it's kind of, we're doing a texture slash drone. Now, what can we do to the texture well, we have so many places. Let's see. If we went to FM. And we could choose the different waveforms. So we could go. See the wave function. This is cool. So, so we're going to use FM. We can go down here, we can modulate this. Let's say we're gonna do something that's gonna be time-based, that's gonna evolve at different rates, in, independent of each other, right? So it's right now, right? Well, you can go to LFO. Inside of the bonus envelopes that I give you guys with every library you buy, right here, these bonus presets, um, there's a couple that are kind of fun to work with. Um, let me see. Spicing. Gives you a rhythmic thing if you want to make it rhythmic. We don't really want to make this rhythmic, right? I have, where's my... Um, There's a heartbeat. That's kind of cool. And then I think you can modulate this speed with an LFO. Right? So you can have something like this happening, and this is happening to the depth. So let's have a different mod envelope. Number two, happening to the frequency. So now I'm getting more harmonic interest. And we could even do this if we wanted to. We could say copy this. Go to number two and paste this. And then play with the speed slider so it's a different speed. And maybe we want to add some curves to this. Instead of this being a step, let's have it be another curve and add. Let's have this do a four pulse. And hit lock. Right? So we have...
It's like the I just watched Alien a couple days ago, so I'm kind of thinking like a spaceship scene with like Mother. She's doing her cleaning and housework and stuff, you know. So we could put an LFO on this. It's random. So we aren't doing anything with effects yet. Effects will automatically take this into oh my god land, you know? If I come over here and we add a delay, like a delay times two, into a radio delay, into a long reverb. No, it can get carried away and it's like, oh my God. But because I've added effects, I, I've kind of lost my focus. So I'm going to turn these off. Effects are something to add at the end when it's doing what you want it to do. And I don't have this quite as focused as I want it to be. I'm now seeing how playable it is. Now that I have all this going on, I might want to go here to another sample. For, let's, let's play with three layers. And let's say for this sample that we're going to go in to, to get to the directories. They, they've hidden, I just so you know, when, when you want to add new samples, if you want to use third-party samples like those that come with Mega Magic Violin Demo, they're hidden. You don't see them until you go up here and click User. And now you'll see the user directories and the Spectrosonics ones go away. And then when you say all, it will show them. But it defaults now to showing just Spectrosonics libraries by default when you go to the sample libraries for the first time. So you have to go to users directory and click it, or you can just say all, and then it will show you everything. And now you can get to sing Mega Magic Violin demo. And let's say we want to use like maybe the Crystallized Crickets. Yeah, that automatically <laughs> took it into cool texture land. But I want to do something cool to this too. I don't want it just to sit there, right? So let's say we go to the wave shaper. kind of fun you can change there's a slider to change the personality of the crusher or change the personality of the animation no animation or animated and this might be fun to modulate really really slowly and with a very narrow range So now I have a whole lot of frequency stuff happening. And some cool personality things too. Now at this point, you could go to the separates. Like here's an example where maybe I put a reverb here and you'd put this to 100% so it's just the auxiliary bus. And maybe I want that like FM mother thing to have reverb. Right? So I'm adding, oh wait, this is on the effects B. Now if I was to turn that off and go to common and do that, now everything gets effects. So you can, you can choose, I have three different textures. So I have and remember, if you hold down shift, you can click. There's one texture.
another texture, and then more of the solid tone. So I'm letting some things bounce around, but I have one thing that's focused. I'm kind of a focused kind of player. I wanna, if I play D flat or E flat or something, I wanna hear A flat, I wanna hear that note. So if I wanted to have just So now I just have that mother sound going through reverb. It's kind of a waste in this case, because um, you could easily just copy this effect, copy, and just go over here and don't have any send, and say paste, right? But the thing that you can't do here, oh wait, uh, undo. Thank goodness for undo, by the way. If you do something stupid like that, you can always go up here and say undo effect. And a lot of times, not all the time. So I've had times where undo didn't work as expected, but that time it worked as expected. So I was going to show you that you could go over here and you could paste that effect and have it here, right? But let's not do that. The, the, the reason that it's set this way is I could have it so I have this cool reverb. I don't hear it for some reason. Oh, auxiliary return. So I could have different send amounts between this and C could just be a little bit, and B could be 100%. Oh, wait, see here. Yeah, this should be. So there. So that's one of the advantages of having it so you have separate send amounts per layer, which is nice, versus here where you just bring up one slider and it'd be doing that, that mix to, if we brought this to zero for all of these. And this is at 100%. Um, Now I'm just sending the whole thing into that channel as a mix. Which is kind of maybe more fun to have, you know, just a little bit of that and a little bit of that. And I want to have a ton of this. And then I control how much volume send I want going back into the mix right here. Now, so there's that LFO. Which one is doing the wave shaper? I think it's, is it on C, right? So if you hold down this down. Yeah. So I want to take a look at show modulation LFO 3. Let's modulate this with the mod wheel. So I can speed that up to cool speeds. And maybe also on the mod wheel, let's add uh, some wave shaper. So it get kind of raspy. Right? And then this sounds going into the tons of reverb. Those kinds of sounds are really fun to change pitch. Let's change the wheel. And that might be too much, so what you could do is go to the amp and modulate the wheel, invert it so it gets softer It's there, 
but it's it's not it's not as loud as that. And you can make this. You have to keep moving the controller while you're bringing your strength up to rehear it. It's not live. That's one thing I wish Omnisphere would do is you could change this and it would you'd hear the result immediately. You can't do that. There. Texture. Why did Mama wake me? <laughs> There's an SOS signal out there on that planet. And these are textures playable. There's also texture soundscape, which is more effect without less pitch. So, um, mood, dark, distant, disturbing, dramatic, eerie, scary, spacey, nightmarish, mysterious. Yeah, all these good words. What? SOS signal. All right. All right. So that's how you do textures. Effects later, make sure that interesting things are happening to the component. There's a reason for them to be there. And if you add effects and stuff while you're building in the early stages, then you lose your focus on what you're adding and the reasons for them to be there, all right? Now let's do a BPM texture, cause I like, and let's do one that's not pitched, because that's really challenging for me. I love things with pitch. So um, let's do something using... How can we destroy pitch? <laughs> oh, that's a fun question to have, isn't it? Fun problem. There. Pitch is gone, my friends. And let's use the arpeggiator and a one, two, two, and really simple. This is more like what you do for trance tracks. And hold down shift to shorten that one. And then I wanna get to where I have a, a bit of a And believe it or not, just randomizing this. And let's say just on this layer, we're going to add re a delay. And then I'm also going to, this is really fun, these two filters. On the delays are really fun to play with with random because I have an arpeggiator triggering the notes so I can now randomize okay and let's try this with one layer just one layer to make something crazy so another fun trick is to use this for another LFO that's pulsing, sync,
And let's turn this down. See you later, Henrik. Hinky. <laughs> and I'm going to use from Del Norte these really cool. Let's modulate this with uh, Mod Envelope 4. And right here, these presets, the Del Norte. And now I have a dancey thing. Uh, let's see, the legato, somebody's not syncing up quite right. Oh, that's because this is set to free. <laughs> you gotta change your, to a legato. There. So that way, each time I play a note, it's syncing up with everybody else. For patch submissions, can we use what you supplied as a start? Yes. Um, these patches that are here in the list are totally initialized except for just calling up the waveform. So you're welcome to use those as a starting point. Um, but take it places. Make sure you're playing with these effects with the ring mod. Not just, you know, find interesting things you can have happening, you know. Let's do this. We're going to randomize pitch. We're going to make like a step sequence randomizer. Sometimes be aware <laughs> you can make the amp envelope so short that it won't get to the point where it's actually able to use your release envelope. I'm gonna find something really irritating, randomize this. This is all about random crazy stuff. Unison. Modulate the unison detune random so it's going all over the place. Right? That'd be cool to have in a dance track. And you can always test this. This is a fun trick. Um, if you want to see how things are comparing, if you're doing something for dance, and you have some of my other libraries, you can go to stack mode and turn it on and go to part two, a patch that's blank right now. And let's go to Airway Volume 1 and just, or uh, Volume 2, actually, I, I don't think I have the samples in, darn it. Um, but BPM Air Kicks. And now you can hear the dance element you're making in the context of a groove, right? That'd be fun. Go to unison. Modulate this with it set to chorus. So it's way out there. And maybe take down spread so it's more mono. That's kind of fun. And I just add this for an extra weird. And to see how this works, go to part three. <laughs> and let's say like to Urban RMX to one of the BPM bass parts, you know, in a. That works. I want it to be brighter, have a little bit more hi-hat quality. So a cool trick to that is to go to common, um, add an EQ that's got like the three band. And it's nice and bright. I don't want it there all the time. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say modulate this. Uh, let's try the filter envelope.
So here's without that EQ. Here's with it. So you can use... This is one of the wonderful things with Omnisphere that most synthesizers don't give you access to. You can use filters and envelopes to control parameters in your effects. And so you can do all sorts of crazy things like this. And when I move my mod wheel, I could go over here. This is a fun trick that you hear it doing it on the bass a little bit. We're gonna do it crazy here. Bring up resonance, go to the high pass, high pass. Get your filter to sound the way you want to sound. Have it right there, then modulate this with the wheel. And at the same time, this is where we get, we're gonna get really insane. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna add like a two band delay and bring up the feedback and then have that fed into a reverb that's also really long so that it will ring out when we bring this back down because we want this to be kind of like this splashy thing, right? Modulate, so we got this happening. And so we also need to modulate this send with the wheel. And then that stays up there swinging and stuff in the high frequencies. Now this has a personality to it because of the resonance. So let's use that. Randomize that. Just a little bit. Now, maybe that goes too high. I don't want it to go quite that high. So let's go here, show modulation on the wheel. Hey, Jason. Cool. So uh, to summarize, because Jason just showed up, we're, we're we're making this. But to make it and make sure that it works in the way that I want mix-wise, I have an airwave kick from airwave volume one. And then I have a bass from OMG Urban RMX. And what's fun with this is you can go here and try different basses. Go to the kick and try different kicks. To make sure everything's working the way you want. And this works the way I want. <laughs> I love it. Harold goes, how can one guy know all this stuff? It's because I've done 30 libraries for Omnisphere. <laughs> I've spent so many hours with this that I have a whole tool kit of tricks that I can go to. Um, once, you, once you get to a certain point and it kind of becomes like, hey, I have these tools. Any knob that you move and you hear it do something that's interesting to you, you can have that be become part of your toolkit to, to be changed in different ways. And if we want to just, here, so I'm, let me save this. If the power goes out, I want to save this. So this is um, BPM, BPM, drum, perk. Because it's more percussion noise of the. Uh, what do we call this? 
Can we mix up with other libraries for patch submissions? Uh, if you mean samples from other libraries, no. Uh, only Mega Magic Violin and then the uh, sounds from the all the Omnisphere samples, which is billions of samples. So, oh, Jungle Boy. I like that kind of path direction. So let's call it Jungle Trance. And we want to make sure we save it in the right place. So before I, I I've, I've set the name, but I want to go up here and say Art BPM, uh, and then save that. And we'll again the tagging is off because it's like violin and dance synth and all that kind of stuff. Uh, BPM ARP, electronic, organic, perk synthetic. Uh, there's a side chain in it. And then this is what's so fun when you have some a uh, handful of libraries that we release or you go through and find some of the Omnisphere patches. They're a little bit harder to find in the factory voicing. But if we go to like, say, let's go to uh, Omnipulse. Here we have all these other things that uh, we could go uh, like. <laughs> Now this is guitar. So at this point, you would go to the multi and go, okay, I want that percussive thing here and and I want the kick here. Actually one down. And I want the bass here. And then I want the guitar. And you just play the notes and you go, oh, I don't hear it. And then move the note. And now I've made a split. So I have these three sounds. So now I can test it in all sorts of cool ways. I could go to part four. I could say a lead. Um, And then go to part four. Maybe I'm going to do 16th notes. And again, you've got to go through your legato. This is where it becomes important to then go to the next step and turn to the live mode and uh, set these to all be triggered by 16th notes. And now when I play it, it will be in sync. jamming for hours and it's so fun to make these so I don't know <laughs> uh, get this all back to where we were at hi Tim good to see you my friend oh it's 144 I'm over <laughs> we just made a cool groove but the thing we actually made is just juggle trance. And then everything else is from Airwave. And actually we could add, instead of this bass, let's go to Omni X volume two. Do I have that in here? I don't, oh rats. Uh, but you get the idea of what you can do with this. It's so fun. So we could go even to like viola. There's some really cool BPM pat basses that were made. So
get the idea. There's just so many places to go with these. So today, <clears throat> let's see, let's initialize. This always kills people, but I do this all the time. When you're, to keep your fluidity going, um, I do this with songwriting too, where I make things and then I delete them and restart all the time. But let's go over here, look at violin demo. Today we made a BPM bongo, which I'll keep working on. It's not bongo whisk enough. We made a texture, why did mama wake me? I could do live streams all day long. I love to hang out with you guys. And then we did Juggle Trance. Okay. So these sounds will be in the library. Um, hopefully this gives you guys some inspiration, some ideas, like what ifs. Keep working on your patches. Um, I'm going to send a note out on Tuesday to bug you to get library patch, get patches to me by Wednesday night. Uh, if you have questions, you can contact me on the Plugin Guru website, pluginguru.com. Um, I'm happy to help any way I can with any advice you might need, um, suggestions. It's, it's all great, fun, collaborative stuff. Um, I just, it's fun to get you guys involved. So there you go. Um, there, my light went out. So if, if, if I, any questions? Jungle trance in a violin library. How's that? We're not afraid to go there, are we? Oh, I'm glad you guys liked it. Yes, till next Saturday, we will, at that point, have everybody's patches available to share and hopefully have a link so you can download them during the live stream. We'll kind of do something like that. Um, yeah, the side chain presets. These guys are just so useful to put onto uh, and to have all these different presets in from Del Norte to call up. They all do something different. Here again, that little. You can change curvature. One last thing I want to show you. Check this out. So one of our one of our wonderful customers here, um, I talked to him uh, to help him install the uh, brake tweaker library of OMG Urban, and then he got OMG drums. Uh, no, no, the, the mega macho drums for brake tweaker. And he used those two for a rap track. Check this out. Isn't that cool? I love to hear what you guys are doing with this stuff. It's really cool. I was like, oh man, I can get into that. Um, I have other stuff I could show you. There's this, I'll tell you the story. I can't play it yet because we're working on um, some things, but there's a blues guitar player here in Portland that goes to these food carts close to where I live. And <laughs> he's been doing this for years. His name's Bunny. He's from North Carolina. Um, let me see. Is my phone here? I could show you a picture of Bunny. He is just the coolest cat. I mean, my goodness. And um, uh, let's see here. So um, this is Bunny. Let's see if you can see this. I'll get this up to where I can. Anyway, he has written all this music and done all these cool things, but it's never been released. Nobody's recorded him. 
And so I want to record him and do some remixes with him because he's just, he's the real deal. And he's got, he had this song we were listening to that he wrote that he at, he played at a, a get together with friends to get his girlfriend back after he he went behind her back and started seeing someone else or something like that. I mean, just, and they're great, great blues. And so I've got some things I've been doing with uh, some, I recorded him performing and then I'm remixing it and fingers crossed this could be something really big and cool and fun um so yeah uh bring bunny on to next Saturday's show <laughs> uh, uh yes there's all sorts of libraries in the horizon um the the schedule is violins um there's an airwave library in here somewhere there's a kid anthem library being worked on I've got the Signs of Life library that I'm working on with making all the cool ambiences and stuff like that. Um, we're just starting with Robert Dudzik to record percussion and stuff that we're going to do for Percussa 2, which will be orchestral percussion put into Omnisphere for cool cinematic things. It's going to be just off, off the charts. That's just going to be incredible. Um, Airwave 3 is in the works and is crazy, crazy, crazy crazy you will not believe what this crazy guy has come up with for the next library um <laughs> rap about money and xanax and um yeah and jason's recording tons of stuff i mean the esc they've got a huge really exciting project they're working on so there's all sorts of libraries it's there's more libraries than there are months so you know it's a good problem to have so we'll keep going. It's it's good times. All right. Well, shout outs. Let's do our shout outs. Where are you at? Shout out from PDX. Glad you guys are here. It's really fun to see everybody. Thanks for joining. Nicaragua. Nice, Ken. North Carolina. Camas, Washington. Oh, I love it. All over the place. Shout out from LA. Oh, thank you, GR. I appreciate that. How many mode on? Shout out from Copenhagen. Great, JX. Good to see you, man. North Wales, Thailand, UK, Bernie, <laughs> Paybass. <laughs> uh, Bavaria. I love it. We're global. It's a good thing. Well, anyway, in eardesign.com, make sure you get the free distortion. Use their promo code, save 40%. Buy some of his libraries. It's really great stuff. It's one man band doing his thing. Um, not a lot of people know about him. So know about him. Share him with your little circles. Get more people to know about him because uh, it's good stuff. Yes, he does. Airwave does have a YouTube channel. Um, he did a summary of Omnisphere 2.5. He's got a number of videos up that he has released on his own to share knowledge directly from him. So if you look for... Airwave, you will find him on YouTube. <laughs> Oktoberfest started today. Yeah, that's right. I have uh, some friends here in Portland that actually want to go someplace for Oktoberfest. So anyway, thank you for joining. This is actually the last live stream using Livestream software, Livestream.com. I've been paying way too much money per year to use their software just to do live streams. So after this live stream, I'm going to using um another method and so i'll be testing you might see some live streams pop up through the week while i am figuring out what live stream software and how i want to work and all that kind of stuff so just a heads up if you see a notice come up say hi okay all right cheers be well see you later <laughs>